Hey guys, just quickly before the video starts, I wanna say that I have an Instagram account in the description below. If you're subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate if you can follow that account as well for updates on the channel. And second, if you come here often and you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It would really help my channel a lot. My first goal is to hit 500 subscribers while my first overall goal is to hit 1,000. So if you can hit that subscribe button, maybe hit that bell for notifications for each time I upload, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for your time and I hope you guys all enjoy the video. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm the Burning Baron, but you can just call me the Baron. And we're here with the second episode of my Mario Kart Tour drawing game. Uh, if you haven't, if you remember the rules, awesome. Let's get right into it. If you ha don't remember the rules or you haven't, this is your first time seeing this, I highly recommend you check out the first episode so you can get a gist of what's going on. So other than that, I'm going to dive right in because I want to get as much done on this as I possibly can in one episode. So... Uh, I have played a little bit of Mario Kart Tour since, so I have a lot more completed. So I'm going to dive right in to the next course, or unfinished course, which is Vanilla Lake 2 trick. Um, oh. Okay, new rule. When I, new, uh, when I start new, I'm going to pick from the bottom shelf characters and... You know what? Wait, uh, I'm searching for a specific character. Okay. Sorry. Uh, my since the since the very bottom shelf of this game is like nothing. Like it's every sync, basically every character. I have a hard time finding the ones I want to use. All right. Give me one quick second as I scroll through all... There it is. This one, I'm dedicating... First race, dedication. Dedicating this to a friend of mine. All right. Um, there we go. Wait. Mm. Wrong glider. Wrong glider. There we go. Hitting OK for video to audio sync up. And we're diving right in. So I'm playing as Astronaut Toadette, or as uh, me and my friend like to call her, Space Toadette. It's, it's it, I don't know, that sounds funnier. It really does. Uh, okay. I've got... Where on earth was that dash ring going? Oh, uh, shoot. Kinda, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda hoping for poor results because I want to do more of the drawing and it's a lot more interesting if I lose. Last time I got a lot of, I got a lot of wins. Like, at least I was kept, I was keeping up first and, uh, I only got, I think I only got first and third. Oh, see this is, this is more like it. Fifth place, so. I get to choose two, uh, uh, God damn it! Top shelf, not top shelf. A uh, mid shelf character. Uh, I believe. Okay, <laughs> I need to remind myself of my rules. Uh, fifth is outline and color two. Okay. So that means I've got to relocate my mic because I need. I, in order for this to work, I need to actually put my laptop on my lap. So, all right, so this is where things get interesting, because now I actually have to do a lot of work. Good. So, we're going to start on my character Katie here, who's on the side. Um, I guess this is also about the time where I would start actually getting into detail about who she is. So... Out of all 12 of my main characters, Katie is the 12th one. Um, I generally, like, they've kind of been ordered by, I guess, I want to say when I created them. And when I actually started using them as a part of my main group of characters. So Katie was the last of the 12 of them I created. And at first, she was kind of just 
relatively basic. She wasn't anything, like, too special in terms of character. But as time went on, I definitely made her a little bit more colorful and a lot more creative. So I guess if I wanted to start anywhere, I guess I'd start with her personality, and that is that she is a very confident, very playful, kind of like flirty character. Um, I don't really know how to properly describe the, um, the type, the character archetype, but like, like honestly, flirty is kind of the only real way I can describe it. Um, I'm gonna do her hair so I'll just connect all of that. Actually, I might as well do her face while I'm at it. Actually, I'll, I'll do her pigtails as well. So I'll color her face and I'll color her hair here. And her pigtails, well this one, will be its own thing. Alright. Uh, I'm also going to have to cut enough to outline the details so I don't accidentally color the whole thing. So I guess I'm doing her, I'm, I guess I'm outlining her face as well. Um, oh. <laughs> I also need a... I also need a color reference. God damn. Alright. Um, excuse this bit for a second. Alright, we're back. So, I got what I needed. So, usually what I do is this. Outline that. Fill her in, but then I have to do all the uh, borders here, so I need to turn this off for the time being. Anyway, so yeah, uh, my character Katie is a flirty, playful, like, she likes to tease others playfully, like, she's still very close with them, but she, like, she's kind of the one who can fluster just about anybody, but on top of that, she's very confident and collected, so I guess you could say she's, like, the cool type of character, but at the same time, like, very confident, like, almost like I describe her as the beauty of my series, because she's also, like, she, she likes to take advantage of her looks. Um, in terms of her fighting abilities, she's, like, that's probably the most unique thing about her, and it's also equally what has made her hard to develop individually, but she's got the Kirby ability, where she can actually copy the natural abilities of anybody, any other person, which has its limits, but it's usually, like, their physical abilities, or, like, in most of their cases, their elemental abilities. So she can copy, like, for example, my character's um, inc incredible running speed and his pyrokinesis and stuff like that. She can't copy the intelligence of another person, so it, like, it's not, like, I think it's more or less of just their individual abilities, not like their mental abilities. Like, she, just because she copies someone who's good with magic, that doesn't necessarily mean she can also use magic, because that would also require a bit of a high intelligence to, like, you know, read spells, I guess, and channel magic. I don't know, I guess channeling magic would kind of be a, a, like a natural ability, but, like, the intelligence to read a spell, maybe? I don't know. But, yeah, she can copy the natural abilities of others. She cannot... Oop, dang it. She cannot copy the powers of, like, a deity or a god, because that would, like, overwhelm her body. So, she has her limits. She also has her weaknesses in the form of dizziness. It's not something I really, um... Oh, to a degree, it's not something I, like, pay attention to frequently. But, like, her main weakness is diz being dizzy. She can't control her ability when she's dizzy. So whenever it happens, she like uncontrollably shifts through a variety of different people she knows in their abilities. Like um, she can also copy people based on memory if she's if she knows the person well enough. So like she could copy her friends or her teammates almost anywhere at any time because she's around them so frequently. Um, she's as you as the drawing is meant to portray. She's very close friends with Stacy. They're like. They're like what I like to call gal pals. 
like the BFF type type of friendship. Um, so that's why they're together in this image, just having having some time out. No boys allowed here. No boys allowed. This is girls only. Guys suck anyway. We all know it. Um, another little interesting dynamic is that, well, my fav like one of the most interesting things I've written about her, I think, is the fact that she's actually bisexual. She's like my first and only bisexual character in my story series right now. Um, she hasn't, she keeps it a secret, not because she's ashamed of it, but because she's never had a reason to say anything, because she's currently in my series, she is in a relationship with another one of my characters whose name is Chance, he's a, he's a, he's a guy, he's a goofy, lovable, naive, uh, goofball, I guess is the word for it. I'll, I'll, I'll detail him another time. Alright, that's that. Let's get on to the outline again. So I'm gonna do... Facial details. Oh, too big. Um, but yeah, so she doesn't necessarily make it known that she's bi, but like, it's kind of something that will get revealed over time. Like, I just, in my writings, it hasn't been. I myself have actually fully revealed it through like posts and stuff. When I, when I draw, I like to post my stuff to like Instagram so my friends can see it. So, I've revealed stuff, like, details through that. But, like, in my writing at the current moment, I have not revealed it. I don't think that really matters, because, like, I don't think... I, I don't show my writing very much, if at all. So... Like, I want to, and I, like, it, most of the time it's people that they don't, don't have the time to read it at the moment, or I don't have a method of showing people at the moment. Because I write with Microsoft Word. So, in order to show others, I would need to get it like on a Google Doc or something like that, and then I would have to add them so that they can see it and all that jazz, so... But yeah. Uh, I like to see Katie as probably the most colorful character I have written and designed, really, because she's quite, like she's got quite the color palette as well. Like, she's currently wearing a like, more of a vacation outfit, so it's not her usual appearance. But she's got a few colors on her, and I absolutely love it. She's always fun to write with. Oh, she's also a dancer. I should probably mention that. She loves to dance. She can't sing for the life of her. Like, I, I describe her singing voice as capable of shattering a porcelain toilet bowl. That's how bad it is. Um, she also uses her dancing as a combat method, where she has turned her dancing into a fighting style. So basically, like, when she dances, she can basically use, like, I don't know, take break dancing for example, she can use it to trip people up. I think it's an interesting, an interesting idea, I've never seen anybody use it. But then again, there are a lot of media forms out there, so I have absolutely no idea what has and hasn't been used. Do her uh, sunglasses here. They look like, I, 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 without the color, they do look like normal glasses, but they're supposed to be, like, shades. So, the only, oh, wait a minute, that was supposed to... Yeah, those are supposed to be a separate, uh, layer entirely. Alright. In that case... Pretty sure this is all I need to do. Alright, this is more like a lot of drawing done on this. Put some color in here. So. Yeah. Um, I really love, I, I'm pretty sure I don't need to mention this again. But I love writing. I love drawing. Um, I would like to do this very often, but it all depends. Actually, I'm going to make that more of a grayish shade. It really depends on my schedule, which is all over the place most of the time. Um, my lashes here. Oh, wrong. Wrong way. I'm 
go back. This is kind of what I end up doing every once in a while when I'm coloring. I get so wrapped into what I'm doing that I forget to swap layers when I need to. Because I want it all on the same layer, it's how it works. So when I color it, the lines are in front, the colors in the back. Alright. Redoing all that. It shouldn't be that hard though, it's just the eyes and the mouth. I was wondering why um, her eyelashes were overtaking the uh, sunglasses. I'm like, wait a minute. If these lines are on the same layer, how the heck is that working out? And then I realized, oh, it's because the, the facial details are in the wrong layer. Because, of course, they were. Okay. Go. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to lie, out of everything to draw, I find, like, mouths, open mouths are difficult because I don't know exactly what to draw on the insides. Like, usually when I'm drawing normally, I'm not coloring them on my, computer, on my laptop, I usually just keep the mouths, like, white. Or, for certain characters, I kind of add, like, their upper teeth in a very simplistic manner. But it's like, when I'm doing this, I'm like, I, I feel like if I just keep it white, it doesn't look all that good. So, I always draw their, if they have open mouths, I always draw, like, their tongue in there just to make it, so I don't have to color it fully white. Alright. That color... Eyebrows back. No. No. God damn it, me. Come on. There we go. There we go. Alright, that's better. At least I hope so. Yeah, that looks alright. Oh, right, her eye. Forgot her eye. And then I'll color her, I'll color her face next. Yeah, and when I color, when I do the coloring, I have to turn off the background, my, my reference layer. Because, for some reason, like, it kind of throws me off, the color throws me off slightly. When, um, like, I, I don't see where if it completely covers the, or colors in the entire area. I don't know how to word what I'm saying. I don't know how to word. Talking is very hard. Alright, so... Pick that up. Color. Correct the layer this time. Fill her in. And then, go to town with the brush. Hopefully this is a... I, hopefully this is a little bit more interesting because now we actually have some color on here. Although I realize I'm going to have to change up the rules a little bit for when I'm finished outlining everything. Oh, I have to finish her other eyelash down there. Oh well, we finish that in a second. Um, yeah, when the background layer is on, the, 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 the color of the background kind of throws me off and I can't tell if my color completely covers all the bat, like, what I need to cover. Uh, she's blanking, so I'll just meh, be a big messy, be a big messy scribbling toddler and just like scribble the entire eye in. That's gonna look absolutely horrid if I miss anything. 
the trinket at all. It's like, with when I fill it in, you can see that the, um, it doesn't... When I select it all, it selects around all the lines, and that goes for anything that's not the same color, so it's like fading outward so much. So when I do, when I color it, I have to get all this spot, all these spots, and when I have the background in there, sometimes it makes it look like it's all colored when really it's not. So I have to turn my layer off so that I make sure I get everything. Also making sure I don't do stuff like that where I color into another area. I'm not going to say I'm always the neatest, it happens to me frequently. But hey, that one's perfect. They're not mistakes, they're just happy little accidents. Gonna pull a Bob Ross because we're coloring, we're painting, we're doing art. Just gonna get a little color in there. Nice, some, some nice color. I'm not Bob Ross, I've never even watched Bob Ross. I only know him from the name, from people mentioning him. Like, a lot of my knowledge on anything just comes from me hearing it from other people. I'm not gonna lie. I myself know very little about very many people. Like, you name a movie in front of me, or you name an, like, you name an actor, not a movie, an actor, and if you name them by their actual actor name, I'm gonna be like, who the hell is that? Maybe if you mention who they play, I might know who you're talking about, but most of the time, I know jack shit about people. I don't, I don't uh, engage in stuff like that. now. Now, game developers, to a degree, obviously I know some of the basic. As a Nintendo fan, I know the Nintendian uh, developers. Like, I know, obviously, I know Shigeru Miyamoto. I obviously know Masahiro Sakurai. Like, they're just, for me, no-brainers because, like, literally they created two of my favorite uh, video game franchises. Like, literally, Miyamoto made Mario. What else do I need to say? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I also know, like, a few... Okay, now, you know what? I'm just gonna stop right there and just say, despite everything, I still know very little in terms of people. And even even among game developers, really, I only... I guess I only really know Shigeru Miyamoto and Masahiro Sakurai. You probably list others I wouldn't know. But that's maybe also because I'm not familiar with most Japanese games. So it's like... I'd say that just I need this up so bad. Alright, I'd say that just about covers it. Uh, I'll you know what? I'll do her pigtail, her mouth, and her eye as a separate thing. Cause I think it's about time I get into another race. That's so that's good so far. Still looks weird when you don't have all the lines. Like Stacy's like completely broken up here. Her arm she's got no arm! She can see her hand, but you can't see her arm. All right, next race. So, unfortunately, I'm doubling up again. I'm playing three tracks. I, no, you know what? Let's go to the last cup. I want to play a different course. I think it's time I actually show off the signature track of this tour and we go to Piranha Plant Cove. I'm playing Piranha Plant Cove 2 Reverse Trick. Uh, cannot pick from top shelf, just remember that. I'm mid shelf, so my options. Oof, I got a few options. I think. I'm going to use... I want to use Night Luigi. I, I've, I've got him for so long, I've never used him. I don't use him very often. I want to use him. Alrighty. Hitting that okay. And we are in... Okay, I haven't played this track yet. Well, I mean, I've played it, but I haven't played the Reverse Trick version. Like, uh, this this tour is still comp is still unfinished for me. I play as Night of Luigi, because this is, this is such a cool alternate that I didn't really get right out the gate. I think I got it, like, slightly after, because I'm pretty sure... Wait. When? I think Night Luigi was introduced in the second Mario vs. Luigi tour. Ow. 
And I don't remember if that tour... I think that tour was just before the battle tour when they made all the uh, pipe changes and shit like that. So... I have a feeling he was a pipe character that I didn't get at the time, and then I got him in the shop later. Awesome. As you can plainly see, I am sucking. I'm in seventh. Come on. Ow! Ow! What the hell was that? Now I'm back at- Ow, I'm in eighth! Oh my goodness, if I come in eighth, we're gonna be doing a lot of work. I guess when I think about it, coming in 8th just means that this video gets dragged on a long, lot, lot longer because, um... I have to, um, do a lot of drawing and coloring if I come in 8th. That's like three body parts, three, outlining three body parts and coloring all three of them. Mamma mia, peep, papa pia. Uh, hit that banana peel, thank you. Don't, don't, I don't want to be the one to hit it. Alright, alright, I need something useful that can get me out of 5th. Okay, that works. That works so bad. That that works so good. I don't. Can I? Can I? Um, oh, Nelly, Nelly, Nelly! Come on, come on, come on, come on! I'm coming fourth. I'm taking fourth. All right. Fourth is outline one and color one. So. That means, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just finish the rest of Katie's facial details. Alrighty, alrighty, let's get into it. So, outlining, get, get this back up. I'm definitely going to need to adjust this. What I'll do is, yeah, I will do this. There we go. Yeah, that's connected. And then I'll go back to... Alright, so I will outline her hair elastic, pigtail. I guess I'm just gonna have to do this for the time being, so that I can actually color it. So that does save me a little bit of work down the line, because now I don't have to connect all of that. And stop at that arm. Well, when I go to draw her arm, I won't have to uh, overdo this, over uh, draw that part. Yeah, this one will be relatively easy. So let's start with her eye. There we go. Oh, you know what? I'll also do her sunglasses. So, yeah, that will counter her facial details. Usually what I also do is that I tend to um, outline, like I use the lasso tool to manually outline parts of her body, uh, the, the drawn body parts or Anything contained, like I outlined the lines, I just realized I missed some parts here. Make sure I missed some up here. Touching up anywhere I missed. Um, and then I just use the bucket tool to color everything in. Like I do this. I'm just gonna do this as an example, I really shouldn't, but I'm only doing it here because it's white and white's hard to see off of a transparent background. This is a very, for me, like for me in particular, it's a very, very delicate um, procedure because I don't want to mess up my line. And also, I'm using a mouse, so it's hard. So I hit that bucket a few times, and voila, her eye is colored. And then I have to do that. And then, side of her eye, pupil, I guess. If that's Pretty sure that's your pupil. Yeah, my cartoony style means my characters have very big eyes. Then again, I think most cartoon characters have big eyes. I mean, look at look at Tom and Jerry. You can't tell me that Jerry's got realistic eyes for a mouse. But hey, 
gets the job done. And honestly, I love it. I like my eye style. It doesn't, it's not realistic, but I'm not supposed to be realistic. It's supposed to be a cartoon. I feel like I can see a little bit of this spot here. There we go. All right, and I will use the same color for the inside of the nose. Check how long I've been at this. I'm hoping it's been less than 20 minutes. I feel like I could get more done. And I just I don't I also don't know how to gauge how long to gauge these episodes. It's also worth noting that once again, unlike my Elgato, I cannot see my uh, recording, how long I've been recording. Because my Elgato is not on my, like my Elgato I, I, is on my computer screen as I'm recording. My OBS is not. So I got really messy. Tongue over, her tongue color overlapped well into her nose. So let's fix that. There we go, that should do it. Not bad, looks pretty good. I'm used to um, using my my color my finished drawings for a lot of color reference, like so, because I need the color green. I'm just gonna do that. No, that's a bad line. Yeah, so I don't know how long I've been recording this. Also, I just realized I never even bothered to check to make 100% sure that my audio has been recording, so there could be a possibility, a possible chance that all of this is for now. But, oh well, if it all is for now, I will just do another episode another day. And if you're watching this right now, then clearly nothing went wrong. Outline. That's not. Oh, please tell me I did not. Wait. Why is it? What did I do wrong this time? Oh, there we go. Once again. Where on earth? Why was that on the shade? Oh, I left off on the shades. God damn it. See, this is I do this all the time. Oh my goodness, I'm so mad at myself again. I did it again. goodness, man. Get your head in the game. You're supposed to be doing content here. So I'm going to turn off the color for a second. You call this content making so many mistakes? I need a sip of my shamrock shake. It's a good thing I got that right here. McDonald's Shamrock Shake comes by like once a year in like February to like late mid-March and I get at least one because I absolutely love them. I know my brother does not like them and I know like I feel like it's a the Shamrock Shake in, at McDonald's is like a neat it's like you either like it or you don't like it like there is no real in between. I personally like it because it's basically just mint ice cream. Vanilla ice cream with mint flavoring in it, and I, I think it's really tasty. But I feel like I can't have them too much because first off, it's a shake. It's probably it's probably bad. It's probably pretty bad for me. What's wrong with? And two, um, like they're caught. They're probably like they're costly. Even with, even if I do get a fifty percent discount at, at, at Don's because I work there. 
Oh, once again, that's lame. Um, like, prices just keep going up. I want to talk about that. Like, I think the last thing anybody wants to talk about is rising prices. So, let's not. Let's just keep going. Right? Turn that off. And the right layer this time. So, get all of her facial details and her hair done. I feel like it's qualifies for two parts, but like, they're small, so why not? Might need to go back and fill in some outline gaps here. Um, after this, I will quickly see how long I've been going at this, and then I'll decide from there. I would like to do more races. Maybe I'll do one more. Here. Bam, and then I can literally just color the rest in. Bada bing, bada boom. Once again, my nest here. Get what I missed here. You know what, there we go, I can cover that up with some red. And then, get this, get this. Bam. And then, because I'm a cheater, a dirty cheater, pigtail like cut off because her arm's in the way. He's a phony! A big fat phony! Hey guys, a phony lives here! He says as he totally cheats the entire point. I'm supposed to be using the brush, but. Well, I'm going to be using the brush anyway to catch everything I miss, as well as the eraser to get anything that comes out of the line. Uh, right here. Nope, oh, that's all good. So we go. Yeah. Ooh. Can't tell if that went overboard or not. There we go. Getting somewhere. So next, I'll do her hand. I'll, I'll do her hand and her neck as one piece because they're small and then her shirt will be a full piece. Alrighty, so give me one quick second. Been recording for about half an hour, 40 minutes. All right, that's what I get for losing. Longer episode for Arguably less, well, I'd say just about as much work. So, this will be a longer one. I am going to do one more, one more race, and I'm going to do Riverside Park Reverse Trick because I love Riverside Park, and because I came in fourth, I got to pick the middle shelf again. I got Orange Birdo. Let's play as Orange Birdo. I'll use the yellow off roader and the tropical balloons. Okay, I'm getting into it. All right. I think Riverside Park has to be one of my favorite recent additions. I know much like most GBA tracks, the layout kind of got nerfed, but GBA courses are kind of notable for being relatively long. Oh gosh, hit by it. How come, how come when I'm playing as someone who's not top shelf, all of a sudden the, the CPUs can get frenzies? Is that just a thing? Oh, I got crushed. I got apps, I got stepped on. I'm going all over the place, oh god damn. Yeah, most GBA tracks can be seen as relatively long when they were brought back and upscaled. Like for Mario Kart Super Circuit, they're not long because they're, they're like, it's a GBA game. I don't know what it is about them, but like, they don't average out to take too long on the Game Boy Advance when you play in Super Circuit. But compared to uh, most modern games, I guess they do have to like, they, they do come across as pretty big. Oh, am I, I can't tell if I'm still big. I don't think I am. Nope, I'm not. I got bumped into me fine. Get out of my way, Mario. Alright, can I... 
cap at least higher. Come on. Dip that green shell. Throw that green shell so I can throw my red. Never mind. A red shell just... You know what? Cheating. Oh. That's what I get. That's what I get. Well, I deserve that, apparently. Alright, well, I came in fourth. Which means I have to outline and color one. So I guess I'll do her hand and her neck. Man, that was... Oh! I guess I, I guess this is what I wished for. I wished it would go a little bit so like more harsh so that I actually had to do some drawing. This will enclose Stacy's hand as well. Well, most of it. Some of it. Her thumb, at least. Alright. And then it's all one color. God, one. one thing about drawing like this is that whenever lines like go inside like this, coloring them is a lot easier. It's like I can just you like what I did with her winking eye. I can just color without color through the lines without having to worry about anything. Make it a little bit bigger because that's supposed to be your middle finger, which is the longest of your fingers. And you know, it's also the one that hurts the most when you flip it off to people. That's not looking that's not looking like it's gonna line up. Hey, what the heck? Why did it stop? I didn't tell you to stop. There we go. Perfect. At least I hope. Um, let me just... I was doing that on the wrong layer again. I am a goddamn genius at this point. My goodness. I'm so into what I'm doing that I just make these simple mistakes. Sorry, Bob Ross, those aren't happy little accidents. Those are me not thinking or paying attention. There we go, on the outline layer this time. Mm. All right, can't get comfortable, just gotta keep, I don't wanna rush it after making a mistake. If anything, maybe I can make it look better. I feel like I could have done better on her middle finger. Hands are hard. I think anybody who draws knows hands can be challenging. There we go, that's more like it. Also, I see a little bit of red poking out. That's the wrong layer again. Good job, me. A little bit of red poking out there. Get rid of that. No, for a bit. Over. And then, do my little cheeksy trick here. Turn off my background at the selection, then we hit that bucket. And then we finish up coloring here, and then I'm gonna call it an episode. Uh, chances are, if I once I do this again, I will be into the next tour, and at the current moment, as of recording this, I do not know what the next tour is. But because I basically have been, like I did the last one on sun, on a Saturday, and I'm probably gonna uphold that if I ever do these kinds of ideas, this kind of uh, video, it'll go up on Saturday. Whether I do one, it's not gonna be an every Saturday thing, it's gonna be a whenever I get the chance to record kind of thing. It's again, very busy. 
I've been opening myself up to even more activities. I opened up commissions idea, commissions on my DeviantArt account. I haven't gotten any, any buyers yet, but I'm hoping that maybe eventually I will. Because I do need to make some extra money, it'd be nice. So, yeah. Um, when I'm done this drawing, it'll definitely go up to my DeviantArt. So I want people, well, I mean, you'll also be able to see it here, but if you want to see it, like, for what it is, Definitely hit up there. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna undo. I'm just gonna erase. Ooh, that went far out of line. You can't be doing that. I will definitely go. When I'm done, I will also go about touching it up. I plan to do a little bit of a background. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm thinking that this drawing will definitely take heavy inspiration from Mario Kart Tour's Paris Promenade. I'm pronouncing it right this time because I'm pretty sure I've actually been pronouncing it wrong this entire time, like almost every word I try to say. Um, but yeah, like, cause Stacy's outfit that I drew her in, it's based off of an alternate, uh, a character variant I made for Mario Kart Tour based on Paris, so it's like her vacation outfit. All right. I think I'll call it there. So next time I'm going to continue coloring and drawing Katie. And then once I'm done her, I'm going to color in Stacy. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you like what you see, leave a like. Consider subscribing if you're new to the channel or if you keep coming back. If you found yourself coming back, please hit that subscribe button. It would really help me a lot. Still aiming to hit um, 500 subscribers and my channel goal is to hit 1,000. So hopefully I can start up a partnership with YouTube. So. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I hope I will see you all in the next episode. So, peace out.